welcome to Amateur Redneck Workshop. I'm Harold and today we, uh, we're going to go on with the continuation of the next exciting episode of the Redneck Stops like I promised in the last video and uh, I thought maybe about when, when I got this video started that maybe I'd sing you a song but then I thought no those folks have never done anything to me why would I do that you know so we're going to skip that. Uh, I guess probably the best thing to do is not, not to do a lot of join. But I wanted to tell you, I went to the Steel Challenge last Sunday. And uh, it, was, it was on the second Sunday actually. And I, I did better than I did the month before. But I'm still a good 10 seconds. Or maybe a little over 10 seconds. Slower than my best time. So I didn't practice enough obviously gonna have to get in there and practice more so the next two weeks I'll be practicing for the 22 fun Sunday we got one of those on every fifth every month that has five Sundays on that fifth Sunday we have a 22 fun Sunday where we go out and have a nice competition with 22 pistols 22 rifles and uh, if I practice up with that who knows it might make me a little better for the steel challenge Nevertheless, that's what I'm going to be doing. And uh, now that we've told you all that stuff, I guess we'll just move right straight on into uh, <laughs> into working on that uh, mill vice stuff. That uh, seemed like a good thing to do. Well, here we are, another day. It got kind of chilly last night. They said it got down in the 40s. I didn't check my own little weather station to see if it really did, but I'll take their word for it. It, it seems chilly out here and it's about 70, still got a cold wind. I think I've gone down 40,000, so I think I'll go down 60. And that'll be plenty wide enough that I can roll it over and do the other side. And I'm going to let you guys sleep through that because there's not much entertaining about watching an end mill zoom back and forth. Okay, I'm going to lay out the holes for this uh, center drill. And then so that I don't have to lift the head up to get a bigger drill bit in there, I'll just go and drill it over on the uh, drill press. That'll save me some uh, fooling around. And I don't have to worry about where the parallels are. Whoa! Got that too close to the power feed, didn't I? Alright. Still looking at it. Let me move you around a little. <clears throat> there, you can see it now. All right. <clears throat> I guess I'm going to try to find the middle. Well, tell you what, I'm going to locate the middle by pushing this guy down on the side down here. And, well, oh, that's a nasty thing and then I'll bring you guys awake well as near as I can tell that's dead center so we'll put one hole here inches apart. I'm going to just try to look at one of those. I know it doesn't have to be beat out, but it's up to have. Alright, 3.15 inches. Double check it again. Five inches. So that's what we're going to crank it over to. That's really close. That's it right there. So 
Next hole. Which I do a lot of. Alright, now all I gotta do is take it over to the drill press and drill the holes. They've gotta be this size. This is I think eight millimeter. So I don't have metric drills, but I've got drills that are pretty darn close. So there's no precision required here anyway, so that's what we'll do. We'll just find a drill that's close and drill a couple of holes. All right, so I stuck a piece of sacrificial metal underneath here, and then I also set the drill stop so it won't go really through. And uh, you get sacrificial metal at the uh, sacrificial metal store. It's special stuff. It's all been blessed by Tom Lester. Now the drill bit could have slipped back up, and it did, it slipped back up in the chuck, so got to set my stop all over again, tighten the, the bit. Pull out the sacrificial metal, which is just as good as new, and finish the hole, which itself is just as good as new. Never can tell when the thing squirted or not. Good, that wants to push it down. Not good. Okay. I'll clean the chips up, put my sacrificial metal back in there and finish the hole even if I have to sacrifice the metal. For about 40 years I used this drill press without drilling a single hole in it. No apprentice marks whatsoever. And then one day I let a kid helped me with some stuff I was doing for him and I wound up with four or five holes drilled in this sucker all in one day I guess you should you just shouldn't let somebody use it well she's got plenty of apprentice marks now one here, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six holes. I didn't count them good the last time. That's really disturbing. <laughs> oh well, that's the way life goes. All right, so I got uh, the holes drilled and I actually found a couple of metric cap screws and it's on the, there. I'll be attaching on to the far end of it down there with, with another piece which we've got to make next but uh, pretty happy to see it fit just right and went on there without any problems. Alright, let me find the metal to, to make the next piece. Now I'm sure this, uh, won't, this finished product won't be as nice looking as something that a guy sat down and drew up and went out and purchased exactly the right metals for it. I'm using whatever I got laying around here, which is an old bent stainless rod that had been pounded on severely. It had mushroom ends and a bend in it. And I'm 
going to make this next piece with a piece of aluminum that Chuck Bomarito gave me, gave me, and now I've got to kind of square it up. And then once I've got the right holes and everything, I'll take it to the to the belt sander and round it up and make it look a little better. Maybe not a lot, but at least a little. The next step is to put a quarter inch slot in this guy so that I can move it back and forth this way on the little bar in the back, which will give me added adjustment just in case I need it. Uh, and I'm going to make that slot up to about the, the hole that's already in it. Hopefully that hole won't interfere any in the, in the size of things. This ought to give me a good range of motion. You can go up and down. You can slide it over anywhere in that range. <clears throat> the next piece will go into here. And it doesn't need to be overly long. I would say that would be probably about all that, uh, that you could really need. I don't know. Maybe I'll... Maybe I'll make it half the length of this. I'll stand here and think on it a couple of minutes. Uh, I don't want to be fixing myself up where I can't reach whatever I've got in there that needs to have a stop, even if it's some little short thing. Of course, I can put some little short thing further over, too. So I'll put you guys into another nap, and I'll think on it. All right, the little rod is 3 eighths of an inch diameter. I'm going to put it right into this guy here. And this, this is going to be approximately dead center of the thing. I really should have had it clamped down so that it wouldn't helicopter on me if it got stuck. So when you're doing it, clamp the vise down. Normally I do, I just got careless this time. Hey Chuck, it's been a lot of months, but look at that brush. Still pretty neat. I, the devil made me do it. Ordinarily I cut a 50% thread for quarter 20 because I use a lot of those... Uh, tractor supply bolts which aren't cut really deep in the threads but this time I'm going to use a 75 percent thread so I'm using a number seven drill bit and I chamfered already the chair says you got to chamfer it before you thread it that ate the chamfer up okay well I'll get a, a tap and thread this thing, but I'll chamfer it before I thread it. Did you get that, Pierre? And I used a brand new quarter 20 tap that I started with the, the drill press. I turned it by hand, the drill press by hand. So, no, I wasn't power tapping it with the drill press. But that should make a very nice thread. All the threads I need. Just so long as my bolt goes through there. Chamfered for a threaded. I have to repeat that because Pierre's probably over there eating those ghost peppers and flirting with the ladies instead of paying attention. Alright, so here's the finished product. It's adjustable way back up inside the vise. Or it can come way back out here quite a way from hanging over the end one of my viewers said I something I was going to use some set screws for the other day said I should use the little brass knobs I made and I got to thinking I did remember making some brass knobs with knurls on them 
I spent 10 or 15 minutes looking to see if I could find them and of course I couldn't so I don't know if I really made them or not or if this guy just caused me to have a false memory but anyway here's my stop and I think it'll do the job for me you can move it back move it out should be every bit as adjustable as I need for whatever I need to adjust it for and there you are I think this is this job come out better than most and so I'm going to declare it a, a winner and finished probably won't need a lot of changes in the future either so there you go I think after we've done all this hard work we need a above a joke or something so we'll see what comes up now this is uh, uh, Australian redneck etiquette and some of the words will probably be more easily understood by Rob, Nance, and Emma, but uh, anyhow, here's the rules, you know, of etiquette for uh, an Australian redneck. Never take an open stubby to a job interview. Number two, always identify people in your paddocks before shooting at them. Number three, it's tacky to take an esky to church. Number four, if you have to vacuum the bed, it's time to change the sheets. Number five, even if you're certain you're included in the will, it's rude to take your ute and trailer to the funeral. And here's some rules for dining out. You know, it's when decanting wine from the box, tilt the paper cup and pour slowly so as not to bruise the wine. And if drinking directly from the bottle, hold it with only one hand. And the rules for entertaining in your home, a centerpiece of the table should never be anything from the taxidermist. Don't allow the dog to eat at the table, no matter how good his manners are. All right? And then we'll cover a little bit here of personal hygiene. While ears need to be cleaned regularly, this should be done in private using one's own ute keys. Even if you live alone, deodorant isn't a waste of money. Extensive use of deodorant can only delay bathing by a few days. Dirt and grease under the fingernails is a no-no. It alters the taste of finger foods. And if you're a woman, it can draw attention away from your children. Rules for dating? Always offer to bait your date's hook, especially on the first date. Be assertive. Let her know you're interested. I've been wanting to go out with you ever since I read that stuff on the dunny door two years ago. Theater. Crying babies should be taken to the lobby and picked up after the movie ends. Refrain from yelling abuse at characters on the screen. Test proven they can't hear you. Weddings. Livestock is a poor choice for a wedding gift. Kissing the bride for more than five seconds may cause a drop in your popularity. Excess <clears throat> for the groom at least, rent a tux. A track suit with a cummerbund and a clean football jumper can create a tacky appearance. Though uncomfortable, say yes to socks and shoes for the occasion. Here's some rules for driving. Dim your headlights for approaching vehicles, even if your gun's loaded and the possum's in your rifle sight. When entering a roundabout, the vehicle in the, with the largest bull bar doesn't always have the right of way. Never tow another car using pantyhose and duct tape. When sending your wife down the road with a petrol can, it's impolite to ask her to bring back beer, too. You know? I guess that's pretty much it. That, that's quite a lot of good rules to live by. Well, that's all, folks. Uh, Y'all try to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Leave a comment if you got something to say. And above all, remember, keep on keeping on. Bye now.